or sensational dentures, you create a wonderful service and that service is your brand. That, that unique selling proposition. You at the front, you dealing with the client, that's what makes your business unique and that's what your brand is. That's the power of a, of a, um, of a really powerful um, philosophy, vision that's carried through to how you treat your customers, how you look after them. Uh, and that's, oh yeah, I want to see that guy, he's fantastic, yeah. Um, and that's what creates the brand. Someone said to me once, um, well, if brands is uh, no good, what about um, uh, Dolce and Gabbana? Or um, who's that guy who makes the underpants? What's his name? Calvin Klein. Calvin Klein, thank you, that was it. Calvin Klein, that's a great brand. I said, yes it is, great example. I said, yeah, but it's a great brand. I said, why do you think it's a great brand? <laughs> because the guy knows how to make good jocks. And the guy knows how to make good fragrance. That's what's created that brand, you know? Didn't happen the other way around. If he was no good at making jocks and smells, you wouldn't know, would you? That's the way it works. Thank you for that. Um, okay, so, so the execs are there to make money, just the same as you are, but they're not there to make money by helping you. They're there to make money by getting money out of you. Uh, and, and of course, so if we can't trust the execs, and we don't know about it, then what hope have we got? Okay. Okay, so we have some very primeval motivators, and there's three key ones. What do you reckon the first one would be? Food. Food, thank you, yeah. So food, advertise it right, fresh, beautiful, delicious, and a jingle that's repetitive and brainwashes you. McDonald's did brilliantly with that ad back in the 80s. Fantastic ad. So I'm gonna play the next one now. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> so this this launched Elm McPherson's career. Back in the 80s, and I, I remember it, certainly there was a young lad, wow. And uh, I'm sure everyone here remembers that one. Um, so what's that one? That's all about, sex. yes, and being appealing to the opposite sex, um, and all that sort of stuff. And this one here, this is the great Simon Reynolds 1980s ad that you'll remember. World's best ad that year. That was a huge ad. And what do you think that was um, that was based on? So we talked about food was the first motivator. Fear. Second one was sex fear. and fear. 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 fear, and that's part of the third motivator, which is fight or flight. It's part of our prehistoric brain that, that has carried over into our existence today. Um, so fear. Fear is actually 20 times more powerful than any other form of advertising or marketing. When you do it right, 
If you do it wrong, you will create a mutiny, a few rule. People will hate you if you do it wrong. But if you do it right, and you do it in the right context, it can be the most powerful advertising. If your motivation's right, the most powerful advertising you'll ever do. But you've got to be careful with that one. Um, so where did we get to here? So, they are the, the, the most basic human motivators, fear, sex, and food. But as they are part of the prehistoric brain, which works at 40,000 clicks per second, they're the first trigger, they're the subconscious things, they're the things you can't control, whether you allow them to take place or not, whether you allow those emotions to, to take over or not, are then gonna go through a filter. And that filter, in your industry, uh, as in most healthcare industries, relates to ethics and honesty. So this is a, a survey that took place uh, about a month ago, I think, um, Roy Morgan. Um, and of the top six most trustworthy, ethical and honest professions, nurses, doctors, pharmacists, and dentists were four of them. And obviously you guys are in there. So, so when we look at marketing, when we look at Car salesman? <laughs> yeah. Should be web salesman too, shouldn't it? Um, top four out of six are healthcare related. And you guys are beautifully positioned to use that in your marketing. So you're the trusted professional, you're the expert, you're the, someone who people lean on. So whatever message you share with them, it's like a referral, it's like unquestioned. Um, you're all the trusted advisor. So, we market with emotion because people buy based on emotion. People with need dentures to eat. People, certainly ladies, like to look good, no matter if they're five years old or 95 years old. Um, so being desirable is a big part of being human and certainly a big part of being a woman. Um, and fear, so annual oral health checks. We get a mammogram, we get a prostate check, we see our doctor how many times a year? How often do we see our dental prosthetist? How many times should we see? That's not to scare people, but we have to tell them the truth. We have to tell them what's possible. And then they make an informed decision. Um, so we use emotion to conjure up the question, should I buy this, should I invest my time in this? And then logic kicks in and decides Yes, I should or shouldn't. So we go from the subconscious, fight, flight, or feed or procreate, to then the conscious decision, yeah, this is a great idea, I'll do it. Or no, that doesn't sound right, it's a bit dodgy, nah, or that's ridiculous, I'm married, forget it. Um, so our conscious mind takes over and filters that decision. Um, then when they justify that buying decision, they will say to themselves, you know what, I'll buy that because it's an investment. It's an investment in, if I get a boob job, it's an investment in me. I'll look good, I'll get a good job, and it's an investment. Um, <laughs> the timing was perfect. That's a great offer. Just when I need it, I'm gonna get that now, bang. Um, I trust him. What he says to me, I will never question. He's the guy I rely on, and I'll take his word for it and take him up on that. Um, for me to not take up that offer, I'd feel worse than if I did take it up. That's a great example of marketing that works, is when they'll feel worse for not buying a product than if they don't buy it. They'll feel worse if they don't buy a product than if they do. That's, that's the big one. Um, the other one is, of course, look how much money I saved on this item. Not that I didn't need it. I didn't need it, but look at the saving I got on it. Wow! You know, we all hear about people who buy up truckloads of stuff they don't need and fill up caravans and sheds in the back of the house that, with stuff they don't need because of the money they save on buying it. Um, so what makes marketing work? More so in your industry than most, being the trusted advisor, but leveraging that, making the invisible visible, telling and sharing with your clients what it is they need to know to make an informed decision. And you know what? If they like it and they go with it, it's the best thing for them. If they say, thank you so much, Ted, for what you've told me, but I don't think I'll do it this time, guess what? If ever they need it, they'll say, I remember Ted told me that I should have done it, I'll go back and see him now. Either way you win, and either way they win. Um, 
communicate with them in the way that they want, using the language they want, on the platforms that they want, with the message they want, the way that they feel respected and listened to. Communicate with them in the frequency they want. They don't want to be um, called twice a week, every, every week of the year. They don't want to be sent letters every Friday for the next 10 years. Talk to them when they want, how often they want, and a time that best serves them. Provide them with offers that they find compelling. So for them to take it up is easy. There's no barrier to trade. It's a great, it's a service to them. They're going to like it. They're going to want it. And then they'll step into it. Treat them so they're special. You remember when we were 17 years old and girls looked at us men or boys and said, gee, that guy's a handsome young fella. Or if you're a girl, when the boys were all chasing you around the schoolyard or university. And now, you know, we get over 40 and young people look at us with disgust. Yeah. It's true, isn't it? You know, it's true. Um, imagine when you're 80 years old. When people look at you. <laughs> I can only imagine when you're 80 years old, the faces that are crinkled up and squitted at you, yuck, you know. <laughs> so if you treat someone with a bit of respect, you're listening to them, you care about them. Boy, certainly in your market, does it go a long way? And you guys know this. Um, think, think of them with their best interests at heart. Um, give them a choice, give them the information, they make an informed decision. Think of the relationship as a long-term one. So you know what, Mr. Smith, if you don't want to go with this new style of denture, stick to the one you've got, but you know we've got it here when you want it. Thank you, Frank, I appreciate that. I'll keep it in mind. You know what, a month later she might come back. But it's never about a hard sell, it's never about selling the people, it's about being the trusted advisor and giving them the information they need to make an informed decision. And when they're ready, they'll buy from you. And if they're not, guess what, they'll offer other people to you anyway. So either way you win, and they win. So that's it for tonight, from me. Did you have some questions you wanted to ask about marketing or about what you can do? I'll give you the example. Say you, you were looking for a car, and you go in and look at a, a deal, and we would expect to walk out with a pamphlet or a brochure on that vehicle. Now, we have brochures and pamphlets, which I think a lot of members are not utilising enough. Um, have you got a comment about handing people some information, particularly when they come in for, on an inquiry? Um, I think that the sales process should be finished when they come in to see you. Um, giving someone a brochure uh, when they come in, I mean, you might as well just talk to them. Don't give them a brochure, just say, hey, look, don't worry about that, sit down, let's talk about what you want. What are you looking for? What are you happy with? What aren't you happy with? What's not working for you? What are you sick of? You know, do you get food stuck underneath your denture? Do you find that your gums are wrong? I can see it's right there. Where did you get this denture from? How come you haven't gone back to see the guy who made it for you? What do you want differently with the next one? Okay, well I recommend this. I mean, if someone's in, in your clinic or your practice, I'd be doing that. The brochure to me is, is, is you pass that. Yeah, if I had a brochure, I'd be posting it out in the mail with some information or an offer that gives them the offer, then the information, and then a reason to come and see you. I would it goes further than that. That brochure is taken home and left around and other people see it or is given to Granny or whoever. Yeah, so there's a strategy around that too. Absolutely, um, information that you can give them, if they're not on the internet, you can give them information in the brochure. Uh, and I think it should be part of an ongoing strategy based upon how the denture is, uh, when they last saw you. So it's part of a sequenced combination of touches. So that when they come to see you, they say, Mike, that brochure you sent me three months ago, this is the denture I want, and then it's working. Because there's no point in having brochures in your, in your practice which are gathering dust. If you're getting them printed, you want to get them out. So, um, so the market has been tough with Medicare uh, on the Eastern Seaboard. I know in WA, not that many people as in the East relied on it. Um, so where you had a stream of cash coming in because of the government, you know, we need to look at other ways to get that stream happening. If you market your business like I spoke to you tonight about, it will cost you less than any other form of advertising. It will lift your profile, you make the invisible visible, the relationship will grow, and you'll find you'll get more business at a cheaper rate than going to see an advertising exec and get them to do it for you. If you do it yourself, you'll save a fortune and make a fortune.
but it has to be consistent. There's no point in going hard at it for a month and then stopping. You know, the old seesaw of business, go hard, you get the business, too busy to do advertising, goes back to nothing, the doors are not opening, the chair's empty, oh, I better do some marketing. You know, it's the old seesaw. It happens for every business, every industry. But if you've got a marketing system in place where you're just constantly knocking it out, doing something a little bit every day, you do that, you'll never look back and you'll have exactly the number of appointments you want on an hourly, daily, weekly, monthly basis. And it won't matter if it's Christmas, and it won't matter if it's February. It'll be exactly what you want when you want, if you take control of your market. Thanks very much, David.